Hey guys, I'm out here on the Middle Provo today. It's been a couple months, maybe three, since I've been out here. Runoffs happened, and uh, I'm sure the river's changed quite a bit, or some of the spots have changed quite a bit, so looking forward to uh, seeing what those spots look like. But, uh, so if you saw my last video, we fished our first moving water comp, and, you know, things didn't quite go as well as I'd hoped. There's a lot of things I want to work on, so that's what we're going to be doing out here today, is working on some of those things. Uh, particularly one of those, uh, one of the venues we fished was one of those spots where you had to, the anglers that did well caught 15, 20, 30 fish out of like the prime holding spot and the whole beat. There's a lot of dead water in the beats and then there's just a place where fish stack up. And uh, I want to get a little bit better just maximizing the number of fish I can catch out of a spot. You know, one, two, three fish actually made a huge difference, and uh, we're going to be working on that today. That could just mean changing flies, changing techniques to pick up those extra couple of fish. So, uh, in the holding water spots, we're going to try and do that today. The middle doesn't have a ton of those, like, you know, 20 fish, small fish spots, but, uh, you know, going from six to eight in a spot might be something to work on. So, we're going to do that. Uh, also, I wanted one <coughs> some of that dead water. I think could have been fished a little more effectively with a really light uh, dry dropper rig. So I'm gonna practice fishing a light uh, dry dropper rig and some shallow riffles and uh, you know smaller holding water or smaller fish holding water, but maximizing uh, the productivity of a, you know certain water types. So I'm gonna work on that as well. But I'm going to get started here. I'll probably just start off throwing a dry fly up on the shelf, see if there are any uh, fish looking up. And if not, we'll uh, pick it apart with our nymphrig. Anyways, uh, let's get to it. All right, I've got a size 12 full freezer caddis on. Uh, I just I haven't seen any fish come up. I'm just going to uh, throw one up here on this shallow uh, shelf pretty much and see if a small fish will come up and eat it. I don't think there's a ton of fish active up here yet. It's like, what, 8 in the morning or so? 8.30? We'll see. There might be a fish or two around that wants to eat, though. Work our way out. Again, I haven't fished here in a while, so I'm just trying to very much in figuring stuff out mode. We're early August. This can be kind of a dead time of the year. Water temps feel okay for now. Something we'll have to keep track of throughout the day. Get off when they hit 65, 66. So. Um, Yeah, we'll see. So far, nothing's come up. And I'm just gonna do this for, I don't know, five minutes. We'll go nymph. There were quite a few cars in the lot, not surprising. So I walked down, ah, half an hour. Hopefully we can just Stay ahead of the the crowd today, for the most part. Yeah, a small cat is coming off right now. All right, so I've got a birdie and a caddis on the Euro rig. Couple of three mil beads might be a little heavy in here. Got to probably shallow up our cider angle as we get more downstream. That's a spinner of some sort. Should 
should be some fish in here. I'm not sure there's going to be much in the back end, mostly because we had to cross back there. So, but like I said, trying to fish efficiently through spots where we can. Got to figure out whether in the, they're in the main currents or the side spots. That's actually probably a good reason to take a water tank, huh? It's a good idea of holding water. I'm sure it's like 60, maybe high 50s, but I bet you it's more like 60. Yeah, high 50s. Okay. Well, high 50s might keep us on the water a little longer, but that also means definitely as the day warms up, they are going to be in faster water and all water types as well. Ooh, that was neat. Little fish right where I crossed, which is interesting. That one ate on the swing. Maybe. That was a fish, dang it. See, gotta catch those fish, man. That was a light bite. They're in there though. I saw the flash and saw the fish eat it turn away we'd never set the hook <laughs> not great okay, okay. this spot just doesn't produce for me but it's probably me There we go. Right in the main current. Let's see what he ate. Bunny. Yep. Eater, fat brown. Okay, little guy. There's a little guy. Right in the drop. Okay. Okay. It's nymph in here. The fish. Another fish. I'm worried about these falling mill hooks uh, that I've tied this caddis on. It was worrying me in the comp, and I wanted to come out and test them again and see if it was just the day, but I don't think I should be missing those fish. Just a little bit of an observation here. I mean, it could be, see? 
Could be they're hitting the bunny and I'm not getting them, but <coughs> that should be a fish. Or they're eating it, like that should be getting a hook in them. All right, so I've changed uh, hooks. Found one with a different hook. Let's see if that makes a difference here. I think the gauge on that, well, ate the bunny. Little guy. I think the gauge on this caddis is just a little too much. It's more of like a still water type thing, I think. Even though, I don't know. We'll see, we need to catch one on the caddis first. Uh, all right, I'm gonna flip the dry dropper in here in that little spot. See if we can pull one up. One came up for the caddis. All right. I mean, I'll take that. Oh, missed it. Just the little guy right there. I just break off. Nope. I think I'd see some flashes in there. Okay, let's try throwing the dry dropper on that far edge. Oh, little guy. Eat the pheasant tail. What are him? Eat the little drab pheasant tail. Didn't eat my nymph when it went through, so. Let's see if we're still floating. Yep. Okay, so what we're learning is we gotta go drab, right? That's a big fish. It's a big whitey. Six X. Oh, I need a little more reach. Look at that big white fish, ate the tiny little pheasant tail. All right. Big white fish on the dry dropper. You're good, dude. 
this white dry dropper rig putting in some work so well it's fishing a little better than the heavy nymph rig maybe we need to go drab on the nymphs too so let's see if there's more in here This full freezer is holding up the small nymph well. I don't think it's going to hold up a three mil bead, but two mil for sure. Okay, a couple more passes. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's a big brown came up and ate the caddis. That was out of nowhere. Oh, not as big as I thought. That was a sweet eat though. Someone above me here. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I love the big spots on the browns. There's a cool looking one. Full freezer. I have to change that fly out. Not as big as when I first thought he came out of the water, but that was an awesome eat. Gotta love that. There we go. Saw it disappear. Late. Hit the little pheasant tail. Oh! Popped off at the net. Popped off or broke off? Popped off. Little guy. Cool. There we go. That might be a better one. Little drab pheasant tail. Getting the fish to eat, huh? Another little brown. Well, we wanted to get a lot more comfortable doing this in some different water types, so I'm happy this is 
working out for us here. Dry fly fish, let's go. That was awesome. This fish is upset. I don't think it's that big. I can't tell if I have them in the mouth or not. Finned, I think. Yep, finned. Okay. That makes sense. Right, guys that's gonna do it for our day here you know the fish were in the riffles in the fast water dry dropper was a ticket and then thing was not i mean uh pure nymphrig so oh uh, we got to practice our dry dropper thing we'll probably have to go work on uh those pod fish so to speak uh, another time but uh if you come out to the middle dry flies caddis full freezer caddis uh drop a little pmd something off of it and that's the ticket right now. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe. Appreciate you all. Thanks.